Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are at Jimmy Jr's rig. Tell them what we're doing today. Well guys, we're gonna be doing a little bit of maintenance on my 2019 Keystone Avalanche. We're going to be changing the anode and the hot water heater and kind of flushing that out because I haven't done it yet and who knows the last person that did it in the last few years. So it's probably better to do it to now. Do it. You should do it every 30 days or so they say, depending on the type of water you're hooked up to. Mm -hmm. uh, you just never know, so good to check it. Yeah. So. Uh, Maybe we, we can just jump into this with this one. This isn't really too complicated. We can tell them the things we'll need, I guess. Yeah, we'll, we'll go over here and show you what we're going to need. We're going to do more than just this. We're going to do a walk around, you know, check like seals and things like that, all that basic maintenance you should do. But we're going to start with this first, so let's get going. So tools and stuff, pretty simple. So we're just going to need an inch and a 16th socket. Um, I do have an adapter because I just have a tiny little uh, ratchet. Yeah, yeah. The three eighths. So I just have the adapter and then an inch and a 16th socket. Then you need the anoids. You can get these by themselves or in two packs. Uh, this is a two pack. This one's a two pack. You can get in multiple packs, but this one fits the Suburbans uh, if that's what you have. If not, Amazon. We'll leave links to all the stuff. They have it all. These are the magnesium ones, step up from like the aluminum ones. So these are the ones you want. Yeah. So we can get open in this, and then I know we'll have to go into the wet bay and. Uh, yeah, you got to bypass on, your hot yeah, water heater. That way we don't have any issues. You want to? We'll show you when we get in here. You're going to want to release the pressure on the hot water heater. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to. It's gonna shoot out at you hard. So let's get in here and get this opened up. All right, so first thing we did was uh, just shut the water off to the RV. It's really simple, just a little valve where we hook up at the spigot. Now with this bypass, you don't technically have to shut the water off, but just to be safe, you might as well. Yeah. Because you're just gonna bypass it so water doesn't go to your hot water or your water heater. Yep. That's what this is for, but we shut it off just to be safe. And then we're gonna flip this up on one of the ways. That there you go. Direction, yep. So that's off now, so now any water will not go back into your hot water or anywhere else. So oh, that's all we, you got to do. Can here. we get the water out of the lines? Can I just like turn that on to get any pressure that's we don't need. We no. don't need to. We're, We're going to release it off of the release there. All right, so let's get this uh, opened up here. Let me pull that right off. There we go. Set it to the side. Well, like we were saying, you want to release the pressure. Be careful if you just did this. And you might want to shut your power off to this if you have it on electric or shut off the propane portion of it. We're going to shut it off. This one's on electric right now. We're going to shut it off. That's what you want to do. And then here, just be careful. Hot water might come out if you I'm if it's there. get out of here slowly. As you see, it came out. But there we go. The pressure's all released. Now we can feel comfortable taking this anode out without it shooting yeah, out of shooting, there. Shooting, shooting. Learn that by mistake. <laughs> Just watch the water's gonna shoot out of there. Water will shoot out of there when, when he opens, pulls that out. Oh, pretty hand. nasty. Keep inward pressure till you got all your threads. Almost like an uh, oil drain plug. Yeah, that anode's gone. Yeah. That's, that's history. And he's you got a lot of buildup in there. Ooh. You guys can't see it, but you can see the chunks coming out. I'll make it so you can yeah. see it. Yeah. That's that calcium chunks. Watch out your foot. Well, it's a good thing we have the, uh, what is it, the uh, flush. <laughs> that is gone. Yeah, but I'm assuming nobody probably changed it since they had. But the it's camper. supposed to be solid. You, you've seen the rods, yeah. right? Well, we can show the comparison, too. Yeah. So we'll just let this drain out. All right, so it took a little bit for this to drain out. This is a 12-gallon hot water heater. But, uh, I mean, it was really nasty plugged in here. I mean, even if you stick a finger in here, it's, like, deep with sediment nasty stuff. So we want to flush this. So we had Jimmy Senior here came and came in clutch and brought the. Uh, yeah, you can buy these sprayer. on Amazon again. Most everything we get from there. This here's that wind your need. You put it inside there. It allows you to clean, rinse your whole tank because it's curved. Got the on and off hook to the zero G because it's flexible. So we're gonna put that in there, get that flush, and we'll keep rinsing it while the stuff comes out. You guys will see it come out of there. Look at it all. Yeah. Get you a closer angle. You can see all that. It's, we're getting it all floating and coming out, which is nice. 
So you use your wand, you just scrape it in there a little bit. Get it, get it all rinsed, then shut it off, let it drain, then do it a couple more times. It's all cloudy and everything. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. Did you see all the chunks that came out of it? Yeah, when it first started. But now you can't even touch the bottom. Yeah. That's how deep that was. Well, this is very important, guys, too, because uh, as he was saying to me off camera, if you kind of let this go and didn't check, uh, check it, your actual element that heats your water, once that anoid rod is gone, it's uh, next up is your uh, tank and heating element. Yeah, so you, you know, leak, you won't be able to heat water. So it's always good for that preventative maintenance. Make sure you turn this around in there so it shoots up to the top of the tank and rinses off the element. Just wanted to give you guys a closer, like this is something that actually came out. This is a what, piece of the anoid, I would assume, that broke up? No, it's, it's, it's like calcium buildup and stuff. It's, all that sediment and all so that. So clearly there. this one probably hasn't been cleaned out since the RV was new. So if you're buying a used rig, don't trust your dealer that did it. Or, or you know, that they have done it. Just you should do that yourself. So we got this all flushed out. It's looking a lot better. We're just letting any residual kind of drain out here. But we wanted to show you guys this was the old anoid. So as you can see, it's pretty like shot. It's it's done. So it was a good thing we checked on this. It's missing the whole part here. Yeah. As we were uh saying just don't trust your dealer or anything just just check it check it every like 30 days it's not hard you know flip a switch drain some water out sock it and you're done uh this is what a new one looks like for uh comparison so as you see it's a it's a small price to invest in to protect this otherwise yeah, i you're, forgot how much too was. it was like 14 bucks or something it wasn't bad and these are the magnesium ones like i said the, the usually the better ones uh and then this this kit also comes with the uh Pipe, pipe thread right here just a little thing of it so you can, sealer yep so you could put it right around here when you put it in so that's, that's kind of cool that's what we're going to do next put that on make sure you go in the right direction when you put on there of how you're screwing it in you might mess up once i've done it a or lot. twice because you're trying to figure out how it's going in usually if it's right thread you're going you're starting from underneath if it's in your left hand or am I, did I go the wrong way already? I already yeah. went the wrong way. See, <laughs> see what I'm saying? You it's will mess camera. up. It's on camera. So it's opposite. So we can just go like this. I'm and just going to put it on top. Yep. Yeah, there we go. That's the right direction. Yeah, so basically just when you're tightening this, you don't want it to un, uh, undo the, yeah, the stuff you're putting on. Yeah, so just put it, you'll know because See, I'm putting it on. It's on this side as I screw in. It, it would technically never yeah, unravel itself. Keep it tight. Or if you're not using this kind, you're just using like the paste kind. That's good too. One thing I did want to note too, like don't be afraid to get a flashlight and shine it in there and take a look because you can see the walls and the back of the tank. So you can see if you flushed it really good. Ours was pretty nasty. I mean, you guys saw it. There was chunks coming out. There we go. So. We're all sealed up. We're just going to put that back in, tighten that up. I don't know how tight to go. You don't want to go crazy. As you can see, like on this one, like half the threads were in. This part wasn't, so you only have to go about half the threads. You can check It'll the tightness, seal. but that's, I feel like that's good. Yeah, that's good. Especially with the pipe thread. If it needs more, you'll know if it's leaking. Just give it a, just give it a quarter turn. Yep, and while you're out of here, guys, uh, double check to the bottom here. Make sure it's all silicone nice. I mean, I went through here before and put some silicone, but that way any of that water that's coming out isn't slipping behind this and messing anything up. It was something we did off camera that we notice too i do have a gas switch in the rv that i had to shut off because this runs uh propane and electric so we shut off the electric down here but the propane was still on so just make sure you check your switch yeah you'll hear it fire up you'll know, freak out but that's it so now we're just going to close this breather valve well no actually we'll leave it open because we want the air to vent out yeah once we uh, open the water then we'll turn the water back onto the rig and then we'll we'll flip that switch we did in the wet bay and this will start filling up all right you want to flip that on Good. Oh, uh, yep. Now we're going to hit that valve.
Yep, I can feel the air coming out. It's pushing the air out. So we're just going to wait till we see some water come out. And then we'll uh, close that valve and we'll turn back on the electric. Hit my pro. Well, I don't even really need my propane switch. Depends what you want on. Fast heating. Well, propane, what's cheaper, propane or electric? Yeah, but how much do you use? I Well, I've been here for like two months and I don't even think I've used half of a propane tank. All right, so leave it on both. Why not? Or go just strictly propane. It's warm enough here. Water's already preheated. And then when you do get back in your rig, you will have air in the lines. Just don't turn on full blast, otherwise it'll splash you. It's getting close. More pressure up there. There you go, see? We got some trickles. That's what we want. Then we can shut that off. And now we are all set. Job's done. Just turn on that uh, electric switch. Switch. Just be careful, you did have water in there. It is electric. Electric's on. That's that job. And I'm telling you, that little bit of time saves you a lot of money and hassle in the long run. Yeah, I'm telling you. So let's go to the next thing we want to check out. So moving from the hot water heater, we did originally plan to change the seal in here because this bulb is pretty shot. But uh, they sent us the wrong size, so this bulb is way too big, so we can't even really close the door. So we'll have to uh, order some smaller stuff. Yep, and do that next time. So we're just going to go around real quick and show you some things that we check. Uh, these are good things to check on the regular. Uh, as you see, I don't have slide toppers, so always make sure. Always get slide toppers. <laughs> yeah, if you can. I'm, I'm working on it. Always make sure this is nice and silicone because without slide toppers, water comes right off the side for me, down the side window to here, and depending on how fast it rains, it'll come underneath. So you can always feel welcome to make sure these crevices are siliconed as well so no water can touch. So do that for all your slide outs, and that also includes checking the window seal. So if you have a little ladder, just go up there and make sure everything's... And that top track, the, the gutter up there above the slide, just make sure they're all silicone because that's easy access for water. And even like this on his bottom one, one of his rivets or screws are out. You just put some silicone, put some in, silicone in it. Or fix it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? right? And then that goes for all slides. The kitchen slide that I have here doesn't have any windows here, so I don't have to look there, but I still would go underneath, make sure this is sealed, make sure all this is good. Always look for little nicks or holes because when the water rolls down, it can get in there and mess things up. And then all your seals on your slides, make sure they're clean, free, laying flat. And then they are, there is a seal conditioner you should spray on them. Keeps them supple and moving around so they don't dry rot. So continuing around, we go to this part of the slide. A lot of this will be redundant. Just basically this will be the last time I say it, but just make sure you make sure those are siliconed and then always check windows in case you have any. And then like here in the corners, another big spot, make sure it's all siliconed all along there. Uh, oh, also check your lights too, because I did notice here, I do have to silicone this little section right here, as you can see, kind of crack. So if water does come down, you don't want to go on move day and your <laughs> lights don't work. Around your ladder where it mounts, you want to make sure that's sealed. Yep, I put a little bit up here a little while ago because there's a little bit of gap there. So I just siliconed it. You can check all the way up. Also check windows. And if you're up on the roof or have a ladder, check the top of your brake lights as well. Yeah, but a, that's a good note. Being up on the roof and checking that, that's that's pivotal. Like check all your lap seal and make sure everything's sealed. No cracks, no dimples or anything in your, your roofing. Otherwise you wanna get on that quick. More slide work. Yeah, see it's all sealed. Yeah, uh, we do this pretty regularly. I mean, I, at least, at least once a week I'm on that roof, I'll blow it off with the blower, uh, check lap seal and any, any seal part, make sure everything's all good. You if probably you get, don't have to be up there once a week, but that's just what we choose to do. Yeah, it's just, At least once every 30 days. It takes me like, what, 10, 10 minutes max once a week, just to, that peace of mind. Or if you're traveling around a lot, you can check it when you get to your new location because all the movement of being on the road, that's a good time to check it too. Uh, another one that we would recommend too that I have to do when I get on the roof up there. You have your awning here. I do have a little water that comes down. I think there's a little baby gap between the seal and the camper. So if I actually silicone that, it won't drip down a little bit because it rolls down the side, goes down here. Um, Make sure your awning arms are clear and lubed up. 
check your struts. If you didn't see our other video, we did a video on replacing one of those on a buddy of ours we'll that throw got broken. It up there. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll try to remember that. Um, and then also, just because your uh, doors and stuff are underneath your awning most of the time, also check your seals on all of these doors because if you have to roll up your awning in case of a storm, this is gonna get blasted with water too. So just make sure everything's sealed good. And then the other part I would definitely recommend is checking all of this work on the front of your RV. Like as you see here, I might wanna seal a little bit better. I have a little bit of a cut there. It's a little gaps in there, but when it rains, it, it rolls down here, goes into here, you know, just seal all that stuff off. And sometimes it is better to peel out the old and put in new. Which is what I'm gonna have to do. Yeah. I tried to put this on over and... Not working. Yeah. That's okay. it, checking for sealing pretty much. Go around, check all your silicone areas. Yep, uh, the silicone checking I do probably once a month. Like where I'll really go through, I'll probably be out here for like 30 to an hour, just overlooking everything, touching everything up. Uh, and then as I said, I do the re uh, roof once a week. That's preference, but it doesn't hurt just climbing up there. I'm, I'm young and nimble. Yeah, right. So like I said, mainly the hot water is what we were doing today, but we were checking other stuff. You should always do that when you're out here doing something. Yep. We'll probably have other maintenance videos for you guys also as we go around this thing doing other things. Before if you guys that. wanna see something on uh, fifth wheel, kind of like maintenance or stuff, please feel free to put it in the comment section because between both of us having one, it's probably something either we have done or we're going to need to do or want to do. So I think that pretty much sums up this video. I appreciate all you guys for tuning in. And uh, if you liked this video, please give it the old thumbs up button. If you haven't already subscribed, if you have any comments, drop it in the comments section. We get to all of them. Oh, I love this little pond. So guys, until next time guys, try something new. Do a little bit of everything. Whenever your heart is broken.